gentlemen, you are watching a Zona film review. I'm really sorry for the couple week hiatus I've been. I have just been really busy. I recently got a new computer, so I should be making videos more often. I'll try to keep a one, at least one video a week schedule. I'm looking for quality over quantity. So, without further ado, today we are going to be analyzing the suspense and tension in Inglourious Basics. <laughs> start at the beginning. Chapter 1. Once Upon a Time in Nazi-Occupied France. The scene is, in my opinion, the most intense suspense and tension-filled scene in the whole movie. It starts out with a creepy version of Fur Elise, which really chills the audience. Tarantino often states in interviews that Alfred Hitchcock had one of the biggest influences on this scene. He also talks about this interview of Hitchcock, talking about this method of suspense. All people are sitting around the table, talking about baseball, whatever you like. Five minutes of it, very dull. Suddenly, a bomb goes off, blows the people to smithereens. What do the audience have? Ten seconds of shock. Now take the same scene and tell the audience there is a bomb under that table and will go off in five minutes. But the whole emotion of the audience is totally different because you've given them that information that in five minutes' time that bomb will go off. Now the conversation about baseball becomes very vital because they're saying to you, don't be ridiculous, stop talking about baseball, there's a bomb under there. You've got the audience working. <laughs> Now the only difference is, although I've been guilty of, in the picture sabotage of making this error, and I've never made it since, the bomb must never go off. <laughs> <laughs> because if you do, you work that audience into a state, and then they'll get angry because you haven't provided them with any relief. And that's almost a must. So a foot touches the bomb, somebody looks down and says, my God, a bomb, out of the window, then it goes on. Just in time. Let's break down this interview. Hitchcock is saying to take the two people talking about baseball with the sudden explosive bomb that unexpectedly goes off and make it so we are so we know the bomb is going to go off in five minutes. Two people talking about baseball, uh, which are Pierre Lepidi and Hans Lada talking about the Dreyfuses, which are High, which we know are located underneath the house. He then says that the audience will be mad if the bomb goes off and kills everyone. The bomb has to fail or something good has to come out of the situation. In this case, Shoshana escapes from Hans Landa. This scene is also influenced by director Sergio Leone. And from a lot of interviews, we can see how much Tarantino loves Sergio Leone. My favorite movie of all time is The Good and the Bad and the Ugly. If you were going to be in a movie by another director, uh -huh. who, who would it be? Ooh la la. Ooh la la. Question. Really? Uh, yes. I'd be digging on being in a Sergio Leone movie. The movie The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, directed by him, has a very similar beginning. A side-by-side -side comparison shows that the openings from both movies are very similar. A f the family is working outside of their house, while one of the children spot the main antagonist. The good guy and the bad guy have a drink or breakfast, and uh, it all ends with a shootout. The editor. This movie was the last Tarantino movie edited by Sally Menke. Sally was Tarantino's longtime editor who edited every one of his films up to Inglourious Bastards. She sadly died in 2010 due to a heat stroke while walking her dog. In deleted scenes of Inglourious Bastards, we can see the actors say, Hi Sally. Sally. Hi Sally. <laughs> I think Sally's one there. Hi Sally. <laughs> About 24 kilometers outside of Paris, the bastards will be waiting for you. Fucking fucky fuck. So close. Hello, Sally. Hi, Sally. Sally, I am not dead. I just pretended. Now I'm gonna go after him and I'm gonna kick his fucking Nazi balls, okay? The people who worked with her genuinely loved the work she did for Tarantino. Tarantino must have been devastated. She was his editor since day one, and her death was so upsetting. She was only 56. 
Tarantino recently picked up a new editor named Fred Raskin, who has edited Django Unchained, The Hateful Eight, and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Chapter 2, Inglorious Bastards. This chapter introduces us to the Bastards, led by Lieutenant Aldo Rain. The Bastards are a team of Jewish soldiers who commit violent acts of retribution against the Nazis, including the taking of their scalps. He tells all his soldiers that he is owed 100 Nazi scalps from every one of the eight members. And I want my scalps! We also get our first look at Hitler, and he seems a bit upset. No, 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 no. We are then shown Aldo trying to get the German soldier to give out the Nazi's location. He refuses, which doesn't really turn out well for him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The other soldier quickly points out the location, no questions asked, and the bastards let him go. As they do with all their Nazi survivors, they carve a swastika on their forehead. Chapter 3, A German Night in Paris. Fun fact, this is the one and only chapter in the whole movie where not one single person is killed, and the only chapter which English is not spoken. This chapter starts out with Shoshana removing letters from a cinema marquee, while she is approached by Frederick Zoller. You can tell the annoyance that is caused by Frederick to Shoshana. After the scene in the restaurant, while Shoshana tries to ignore Frederick, we see a truck picks her up. They make her get in the car and take her to a restaurant. After some talking about cinema, Hans Landa appears. Yes, THE Hans Landa from the beginning. The man ha that had Shoshana's family murdered. After Hans leaves, Shoshana breaks down in tears. It was such a close call. Some speculation leads some to believe that Hans actually knew this whole time that it was Shoshana. This whole chapter is very intense. We know something they don't, and we don't know what's going to happen next. Shoshana tells Marcel she wants to make a movie just for the Nazis. This marks the start of Operation Kino. Chapter 4, Operation Kino. Operation Kino starts off with Archie Hick Hickox meeting Ed Fennick and Winston Churchill. Archie informs them of what is about to go down. The bastards will meet Bridget at the ambush tower. This scene is also really intense because we know there's going to be a massive firefight, we just don't know when and how. It's just a bunch of drunk Germans playing a game while Hugo shoots a Nazi, causing the big firefight to break out. Stay your feet into your Nazi boss. <laughs> Hans Landa arrives at the tavern and finds a woman's shoe and a napkin signed by Hammersmark. Hans realizes what happened and leaves the tavern with a smile. Before we proceed to the fifth and final chapter, I want to inform you on some fun facts about the movie. First, Tarantino first wrote the script in 1998, which was way too long. He said it could be enough for a 12-hour miniseries, so he had to create a new story, but with the same characters. The terrific performance from Christoph Waltz almost didn't come to be. Tarantino originally wanted Leonardo DiCaprio to cast the role of Hans Landa. This would have been terrific, but Tarantino wanted a German-speaking actor, which he made a really good choice on. Another role that was changed was Donnie Donowitz, or The Bear Jew. Adam Sandler was supposed to take the role, but decided to work on funny people instead. How'd that work out, Adam? Not good. The fake Nazi movies were actually directed by Eli Roth, including Nation's Pride. The six minute Nazi movie that is shown during Operation Kino. The title card for the movie was also sh that is also shown right now is actually handwritten by Tarantino himself. The scene where Hans is choking Bridget von Hammersmark is actually performed by Tarantino himself. These are his hands and he reportedly knocked Diane Kruger unconscious at one point. And finally, the original name was supposed to be Once Upon a Time in Occupied France. Well, Tarantino sure does love the titles of movies that started the Once Upon a Time. Well, this could be due to his love for uh, spaghetti westerns. I know you're a great fan of the so-called spaghetti West yeah. westerns and your influence on it. Now let's move on to the final chapter. The best chapter. Revenge of the Giant Face. We are shown a series of flashbacks that showcase Shoshana getting ready for the premiere. Me making a random filmmaker record a video for her and insert it in the Nation's Pride premiere. 
we see Hans Landa notice the bastards are there, are there with Bridget von Hammerschlag. So he goes down there to greet them. He notices Bridget's foot cast and asks what happened. He already knows what happened, you know, secretly from uh, chapter four. So when he notices the sh that the shoe perfectly fits, well, he just chokes for the death. I mean, Tarantino really. Taran he chokes for the death. Okay. Yudovich and Aldo are kidnapped by Londa. Uh, Londa wants to make a deal to Aldo's superiors. We then see Marcel say goodbye to Shoshana, and he leaves lots of money in the field. Salar doesn't seem to enjoy the movie, so, you know, he leaves and goes up to the uh, projector room with Shoshana. He then tries to be friendly, but notices how much Shoshana doesn't want him to be there. He gets mad and slams open the door. Shoshana still refuses to listen to him. She tells him to shut the door, so he does so. And she then grabs her gun and shoots him three times. She goes to look at his wounds, but he, turn but he turns and shoots Shoshana, killing her and they both drop dead to the floor. Donnie and Omar get to kill the guards in disguises. They execute them in gory fashion. Shall I get? <laughs> Shoshana then appears on the screen of the projector and tells them that they are all going to die. Marcel then ignites the nitrate film, setting the whole place on fire. The bastards Donnie and Omar start shooting Hitler and then down onto the crowd. The place then blows up and everyone inside, including Donnie and Omar, die. The final scene cuts to the Allied lines where Londa and his driver drive out of Yudovich there. Hans surrenders and Aldo shoots the driver, so Londa freaks out, and Londa is handcuffed. Aldo decides to take his knife and give the signature swastika engraving to Londa. We then get a classic Tarantino box shot of Yudovich and Aldo looking at the camera. It makes complete sense. I think this just might be my masterpiece. <laughs>